Well, everybody on Facebook, how's it going today? What you're seeing right there is where that oil leak is. Stop me going down the road. Apparently, uh, Chevrolets don't like a little bit too much oil in their track case, so this is what happened. Outside, uh, it's just me. But, uh, there's the motor. I guess you better know what you're doing if you're going to buy one of these things. Stuff happens. But, uh, yeah. There's a lot of said talk about, uh, you know, friendliness and all that stuff. But when it all comes down to it, it's just us. That's it. I was reading this really awesome book last night. I should get it. 120 years ago in America. We had Americans, I guess. But we had immigrants. My grandmother came here. Um, a little bit later than that. Uh, maybe 1912. She came from Prussia. And people don't even mostly know what Prussia is. But this book here. That book right there. Look how beautiful that 13 year old girl is. This is the diary of a Anetka Kamasika. She's in Latimer, Pennsylvania in 1896. It's called The Coal Miner's Bride. It's her diary. It starts out in uh, Poland. And the Tsar had taken over Poland and was occupying it. They were pretty brutal over there. Um, her father was a coal miner in Pennsylvania and promised her husband her brideship, her marriage, if he would just buy a ticket for her and her boy and her grandmother. Grandmother stayed behind. The story goes on. What could she do? Just about everything. She could sew. She could make milk. Take care of chickens. And thatch roofs. She was a very spirited young woman. at 13 years old to be married to a 26 year old miner. She was married to him for about 8 months. And then he died. Died in a coal accident. Then the, uh, the coal bosses came to her and said, you owe us $100, which was quite a lot of money. Oh, well, the reason why is because he owed like $40 in blasting powder. You had to buy your own. Your own caps, your own blasting powder, your own tools. They just provided the cave for you to crawl in so you could die. So at 14 years old, she's taking care of this miner's three kids who his wife died in childbirth. And uh, times were tough for him. He started to drink and not loving her so much. And then all of a sudden this mind fell in on him. That's about where I'm at in the book. I'm about halfway through. It's an amazing story when I think about 13 and 14 year olds today. I think about the fear that this country has over something they can't see. And um. I've been in a blackout for three weeks now back here in Tennessee. I haven't been able to get out. This Probably this video is not going to get out for a while. But I wanted to make it. If you don't know how to do nothing, life will do something for you. That's for sure. Not many people will help anybody anymore these days, it seems like. But you can help them all you want. I'll be moving on pretty soon if this uh, surgery goes well.
workers right here. What's left is somebody that I guess had something here and they decided to go. Bathroom's over there. Got some water right here. Got a little food right there. I'm as self-contained as I can be. While, you, while the cities are riding, I guess, and while they're making more demands that people wear masks everywhere, I'm thinking about Anetka. I'm thinking about how courageous she was to get on a boat, go all the way down in the steering passage and go across the Atlantic Ocean and see the ocean a couple of times and then all of a sudden come to America and tagged and bagged like cattle and sent to a coal mine so that the coal miners could exploit her, her husband, and everybody else for wages way beyond the ridiculous. Put them in debt for life, just like that uh, old song, I Sold My Soul, soul of a Company Store. And I'm wondering why more Americans don't stand up and say to hell with these corporations. Oh, they're held hostage. Just like back then. And Americans know how to do stuff. They know how to program television sets and program computers. And they know how to get in their cars and turn keys. They know how to go to work and wear masks behind the counters. They know how to do all that stuff. Just like, uh, it's just sort of like things switched, you know. Where Anuska could can pickles and put up stuff for the winter. Thatch roofs, milk cows, take care of children, raise kids, be a good wife, even though she didn't even love the man. She didn't even know what love was, and she was 14 years old. I think America has been used for a long time. And the people that get up to that level where they don't have to worry about the kind of stuff that people, normal people, I guess, are just the, the poor and the the people that don't have a lot, they just, they don't want to be poor anymore, so they just start selling themselves out. I think the, 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 the elites, the, the lords, and the, and what have you knew this stuff, they've always known it. They knew it in Poland back in the 1800s, well hell, they knew it in the 1400s too, because I got another book over there about a young woman, the same situation, except she's an elite. And take it back to Rome and Tactus and what he says about Germania and how backward my people were. Call us savages. We didn't want any gold. We just wanted family and we wanted to be left alone. Human beings haven't changed. Anyway. It's another day here in Tennessee, and uh, see how it goes. I wish y'all well. Twelve so out.